Hey guys, here we are for part two of ritual crafting, part two of like 20 billion. So we made our creativity blend and uh, as you can see, got that going. Um, so now what do you do? It's really intimidating to start off with a blank slate on any ritual. Well first, you decide on your theme, which you probably have done before this point, before actually sitting down to write it, but you know, whatever. The theme I decided on after several people um, sent me messages about it was dedication. And I got a lot of great responses, I really did, and I contemplated doing several of them uh, seriously, but um, dedication seemed that it would appeal to more people. It seemed easier to do in this capacity than some of the other uh, options that I was given. So I thought, that we should probably do dedication. So you've decided on dedication for your ritual. Um, you have to really start thinking about what dedication means to you. What do you really want out of this ritual? Start thinking of symbolism that you would like to use that would be meaningful to you because no ritual is complete without a hint of symbolism. In fact, a heavy-handed dose of symbolism. Um, that's what ritual basically is all about. So, as a former English major, <laughs> I usually start with pre-writing. So you can do this in your book of mirrors or you can just do it wherever, um, just on a loose piece of paper or on your computer, however. I find that writing, physically writing instead of typing, is better for this process because it makes you freer for some reason in my mind. I don't know, it, that's me personally. You might find feel that you can move faster with, and keep up with your thoughts if you're typing. It's completely up to you. Basically, you're just gonna sit down and spend at least 15 minutes writing down everything that comes to mind, just free writing, when you think of the word dedication. It can be correspondences that come to your mind, and note on that, if you're writing down correspondences, like herbs that you wanna use, crystals, colors, gods, whatever, don't overthink it, just write it down. Seriously, the second it comes to your mind. Don't think, oh, is that right? Would that go with this ritual? There's another step for that. You're going to check it later. I find if you do that, you're probably going to be closer to the symbolism relation for you than looking it up in a book. Because looking it up on a, in a book limits, you know, what you're really going to be accepting of using in your ritual. And I did have another video on correspondences, I know, and I'm repeating a little bit. But this is really important because symbolism is about speaking to your subconscious and this is kind of a means of engaging your subconscious and writing the ritual. So your subconscious is going to know what symbolism works for you. So just write it down the second you think of it. If you come up with lines from poetry you've read or prose or anything that just pops into your mind that could be used in an incantation or part of your ritual, just write it all down. And then... After you've done all that, you can go through your list and start researching things. If you wrote down a line, try googling, like a line of prose or poetry, try googling it. See if you've actually read it somewhere and see if that poem or a piece of prose really could mean something for your ritual. If not, don't discard it completely. If, you, if that line still speaks to you, you can really try to incorporate it into your work. You can try looking up the correspondences to see how close you were to what actually is the correspondence to the general pagan population or the author that wrote that table. It can help you narrow down what you want to use. If you wrote down like five colors and you look up the correspondence and white is the best one, then you can use white if white's what really speaks to you anyway. Things like that. You can do research on herbs or whatever that you wrote down, how they could be used in your ritual if you want to use them in oils and burn a blend, or if you want to use them in incense, or you want to use them in some other fashion. So the pre-writing stage is key to focus your thoughts, because if you just sit down and try to write, it's going to be kind of all over the place, and you're going to have to do so much more research. I know it just sounded like I tripled the research that you're going to have to do for this ritual, but you have no idea. I didn't really. I'm helping you focus on how to make this personal for you, how to make it unique to you. If you skip this step, it's not really doing you any favors. It might seem like it's easier to skip this step, and it might seem too school-like, but uh, 
I'd suggest really doing it. To do this step, you might choose, in addition to, say, burning the creativity blend or another blend, like, you know, your favorite or uniquely you that you created yourself or something, you might want to cast a circle. Uh, some people do that when they're writing the ritual. They'll spend like a day or so or several circles writing the ritual. They'll cast a circle and maybe invoke Bridget, the goddess of inspiration, or um, the muses, or someone else that's like a god of writing or something like that that'll help you focus and give you the inspiration that you're seeking. So you can do that or you can just choose a quiet place outside or spend some time alone in your room writing. Whichever one works for you. You can incorporate all of them if you want if you're going to spend several days writing this ritual, which after watching the series you're probably going to realize you should do. That's the pre-writing stage. After you finish the pre-writing stage to do your research, the simplest thing, and I'm sure what most of you are going to do, is get on Google and Google whatever the correspondence is you're looking for. If you're looking for correspondences for, say, Moonstone, because you wrote down Moonstone, you can just Google that, and chances are the correspondences are going to be in, are gonna be correct. Like, there's there are many things I'm going to tell you that you shouldn't Google, but because the information won't be accurate, but correspondences, it's so personal that it's hard to be wrong. You can look at several sites for different opinions, though. The book I usually go to is Complete Idiot's Guide to Wicca and Witchcraft, which I know sounds dumb, but it does have a lot of correspondences. That's where I go for one of my sources, because it just has every correspondence you could possibly ever need. That's the reason I really recommended my that book in the book recommendation video. Uh, so... There are some other books that I have that have tables of correspondences, but they're not as extensive as those. That has herbs, oils, stones, everything, basically. And I'll talk about that in a later video about correspondences for your ritual. So after you do, you've, or you've done your research and probably taken notes, you kind of want to organize your thoughts. I usually do that on my computer. I'll open a Word document or whatever and just type down all my no notes and organize, just like drag and drop them in different places so I can see what could go where. If I have lines of writing that are going to go in the ritual, I'll put them under like ritual text. Or if I have like herbs that are going to go in an incense, I'll put them under my incense notes, oils for anointing somewhere else. That helps me focus this part too so that I can, when I move forward to actually writing, I'll have things to look at or shopping or whatever. It's good to have that shopping list too. And as you're moving tor through this, you might be collecting a list of things that you're going to need. Tools, candle colors that you're going to need to buy, herbs, oils, burners, anything you're going to need to do this ritual. You might want to start that list as you're going along instead of going back because it's easier to keep track so you won't miss anything. Because um, that's really important if you only have a few days to go shopping and you're, you're setting up for your altar, you're setting up for your ritual and you're like, oh crap, I didn't buy that blah blah blah, like burner or something that it's hard to progress without. So I'm the first person to tell you you don't need tools to do a, a ritual, but it's kind of distracting when you had planned to have a tool and you don't have it. So if you're planning on using tools, make sure you have a list. So that's the pre-writing stage, and um, I'll be back with part three.